as the saying goes, even a blind chicken sometimes finds a grain. And so I accidentally made my green hat switch decoder a functioning ABS and APB signaling system. Let's see how that happened. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. If you have watched the last video, you know that the green hat, same as the blue hat, can interpret and display information from various sources. Switch commands, signal commands, buttons, block detectors and more. And similar to the Digitrax SE8 signal decoder, it can combine two or even three switch addresses to form a signal with up to eight individual aspects that can be displayed. Identical to the blue hat, it supports a dynamic and a static interpretation of the switch commands. The dynamic interpretation is identical to the SE8. The aspect is set based on the last received switch command, so two addresses allow for four and three addresses for six different aspects. The static interpretation takes the position of all switches into consideration, resulting in four and eight aspects for two and three switch addresses. As part of the green hat development work, I tried to simplify the setup procedure. I realized that there is no reason to distinguish between standard switch and static multi-switch address format. They are exactly the same except for the number of addresses. So I changed the address field that it would simply accept up to three addresses in comma separated format and then display the resulting combination of settings for defining the server position for each combination. And then I had that idea. What if I would use the same setup principle for block detector addresses? Allowing up to three different block detector addresses and allow for setting the servo position as a function of the combination of the block detector statuses. Let's say I have two track sections in a row, each with its own block detector reporting the occupancy status. Now I could have a servo moving to a specific position based on the occupancy status of these two track sections. While thinking about that, it dawned on me that this is exactly what an ABS signaling system does. A particular signal is looking one, two or three blocks ahead and essentially displays the occupancy status of those blocks. If the adjacent block is occupied, the signal shows stop, as it needs to prevent another train to enter that block. If the next block is free, but the one after the next is occupied, the signal shows slow, meaning that the train can enter the block but must be prepared to stop at the next signal which comes at the beginning of the next block. So I built a simple test track to demonstrate. I used some track segments I had laying around for years and built a traditional oval. I isolated one rail of the section so that I created six individual blocks going around the oval and connected each section to an individual output of a BTL-168 block detector module. I then used the Loconet viewer to verify that block detection is working properly. And it did as I saw the block detector messages flowing when I let the locomotive doing circles on the track. The block detectors I get are those numbers here, which corresponds to the wiring of the outputs on the BDL-168. Next, I set up a blue hat with a few LEDs connected to it and configured it to display the occupancy status of each block, so that I have an ongoing verification that the block detector messages are actually generated. For that purpose, I used some standard RGB LEDs along with a WS2812 driver chip. I showed how to do that in detail back in video number 22. The blue hat, by the way, is also configured as Loconet to MQTT gateway, so that I can use Loconet via Wi-Fi and see all information on my smartphone. Next, I installed six servos, one at the beginning of each block. 
I 3D printed a servo holder to make the servo remotely look like a signal mast. Not that I would use this on a real layout, but it for sure is better than the naked servos. With six servos I can protect six blocks going in one direction. So this is good for a single track ABS system. Watch videos number 20 and 21 for more information about how an ABS system works for single and double track. Now the only remaining thing to do is configuring the servos on the green hat servo decoder, which by the way is connected to Wi-Fi using Loconet over MQTT, so there is no physical Loconet connection needed. For demonstration purposes I make the servos acting as three aspect signals. Horizontal means stop, 45 degrees is slow and vertical means go with track speed. Three aspects means the signal needs to watch the next two block detectors and set the signal position according to this truth table. If both blocks are free it should show track speed. If the adjacent block is occupied, it of course should show stop. And if the adjacent block is free but the next block is occupied, it should display the slow aspect. In the configuration dialog I enter first the numbers of the two block detectors the signal should protect. The dialog then shows me all possible combinations of occupied and free. With two block detectors that's of course a total of four possibilities. I now can define the servo position for each aspect. Of course the value depends on the type of the servo, but luckily the servo moves into the selected position every time I change the value, so it is very easy to adjust the settings to the characteristics of the servo. So I just select the desired block detector combination and set the servo position. Then I repeat that for all four combinations and the setup of the first signal is complete. Then I repeat the process for the remaining five signals and my single track ABS system is ready for testing. Here we go. As you see it works as desired. After the locomotive enters the block the signal goes to stop. When the locomotive enters the second block and releases the first one the signal goes to slow while the next signal changes to stop. And when both block detectors are released, the signal shows track speed, just like the real thing. And just to show the sequence of events a little clearer, I lined up all signals next to each other, so you can compare their coordinated movements as the locomotive goes around on the oval track. Now of course the next question is, does this work for double track as well? The answer is... Somewhat. Let's find out why. First, let's install signals in the other direction. Unfortunately, I did not have any more servos available, so I added a few more LEDs to the blue hat and configured them as signals. Yes, I also revised the block detector address field in the blue hat setup so that it can take up to three block detector addresses in comma separated format. And like on the green hat, it gives me the resulting combinations so that I can define a desired light pattern for each aspect. I chose red for stop, green for track speed and yellow blinking for slow. For demonstration purposes I am using some standard WS2812 NeoPixel LEDs, so the same as for the block detector indicators and two standard light signals that I converted to WS2812. Again, watch video number 22 where I show how to do that conversion. And note, the additional LEDs and signals are simply daisy chained with the existing ones as all of them use the standard WS2812 format, so it is only a matter of configuring them in the blue hat. And here we go, ABS for double tracking. You can see now signal protection of the block from both sides, one using a semaphore signal, the other a light signal. And that protective island, so to speak, is moving with the locomotive. And this reveals why I said somewhat when it comes to double tracking. In a real double track ABS system, 
the protection in front of the moving locomotive would be one block longer to protect against an upcoming train which could also be moving. The extra block allows for the space to slow down both trains and avoid a collision. Now, it would be possible to use an extra block detector since I can specify three addresses in the setup. But it would work in front and in the rear of the moving train, while the real system is asymmetrical with an extra block only in front of the moving train. So that's the limitation. But on many layouts this probably does not really matter and the simple system as shown here will do. However, if this is not good enough, there is good news as well. I am still working on the security element ALM for the IoT stick, which will implement a fully configurable signaling system with an underlying track model, so that it will not only consider different signaling concepts, but also turnout positions and other relevant aspects. If you are interested in that, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you will have a premium seat when new videos become available. In the real world, the next level of protection against an oncoming train on double track is using a PB as explained in video number 21. Fortunately, this is now really simple to implement. All we need to do is adding a switch to an additional BDL168 input that allows for manually setting the occupancy status. We now can use this additional input as direction information and turn all signals to halt if the direction is set against them. Here is how the resulting truth table looks like. Of course, with three block detector addresses it now has eight entries, from which half of it is set to stop just because of the direction input. Again, I can set this up in the green hat for the servos and the blue hat for the light signals. And here we go. APB for the double track system with signals showing three aspects and protecting two blocks behind the train. Let's see how it works. If I operate the direction switch, all signals in one direction go to stop, while the signals in the other direction do their protection display as before. If I reverse the direction switch, the signals in the second direction go to stop, while the ones in the original direction now work as single track ABS as before. A moving locomotive activates the block protection on the rear end, while the front is protected by the APB tumble down activated by the direction switch. Pretty much like the real thing and no computer needed to operate it. All that's needed is block occupation information and either a blue hat for light signals or a green hat for servo based signals. A BDL168 can provide block information for 16 blocks or 15 blocks plus direction input. And the green hat can drive up to 16 servos so with one BDL-168 and two green hats, you can set up a double track ABS signaling system for 16 blocks and have animated signals on your layout. I don't know about you, but I thought that's pretty cool. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to keep me going and it also promotes this video and the IOTT channel in general because as you know, YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.